Hey there! Right before I moved to Canada from the Netherlands, there was a pen meet in the Netherlands. We had a we set up not 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 just us. I was involved, but uh, the, a very nice crowd of, of pen lovers in the Netherlands got together. And on our second meet, uh, I I met Guru Nandan, and he um, um, he's from India, and he gave me this pen. He said it would be interesting for you to to review this perhaps. So it is the Guider Ebonite Raja Medium, uh, and. The pen has been changed a little bit over the years. You can still buy it. It would look slightly differently, and I'll, I'll address that uh, when I show off the, the pen parts. But it's an interesting pen. Indian pen, eyedropper, uh, pretty nice size. So I thought it would be interesting to go over the motions now. I'm very sorry uh, that it took me so long, um, but here we are. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it and what I not like about it. Let's get going. Okay, let's have a look at this Guider Ebonite Raja Medium. Uh, the pen is made by Guider, as I understand it. They're made in a remote village in the east of India. That's what I've been told. Uh, this model is still around, but it's been changed a little bit. So these two gold rings, for example, have now been replaced by a single wider gold band. Um, and um, the newer models also use Schmidt nibs as opposed to nibs made in India. Uh, as is uh, this nib. This is still a guider original nib. Okay, I'm go let's let's first cover the, uh, the 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 parts of the pen. All right. So I am really thinking this is ebonite. Right. That's probably why it's called the ebonite raja. So it it feels like ebonite has a specific specific smooth feeling to it. Or I guess what I was trying to say was it really feels like ebonite. Okay, on top you have this green finial black cap clip that says guider. Nice and springy. This model, the two gold bands. Barrel tapers down. Another green end cap. It looks like black here, doesn't it? Oh, I see, sorry. I'm looking at my, my little camera LCD screen. So green, but actually a black top. So interesting, interesting uh, color choice. The cap unscrews. This is an eyedropper filled pen, so I'm not going to open it, but it, it, it holds, I think, about three milliliters of ink that I, that I, uh, I, I quickly uh, sort of ascertained with my eyedropper. Section, threads, bit of a step down, but it's, it's not huge. Section tapers down, flares out again. Very classic uh, section design. And then a nib, which I would call about number five. If you hear weird noises in the background, it's very windy, the window is open. So there's some, some weird uh, sort of rubbery uh, flatulent sounds going on there. But it's not me! Okay. Um, nib says Guider Fine India, has the Guider logo, and has an ebonite feed, which is always nice. And I would call that about number five, right? Nice pen, nice size, not super small, can be posted, and then it's a really nice size. So kind of a fun pen. Simple, but fun. And a bit of a piece of history because it's uh, by uh, uh, one of the, the models that have been changed a bit over time, but this is one of the original models. Also, this costs about seven dollars. So it's, it's really not a, a major purchase, so to speak, which is kind of fun, because pens can get very expensive. Let's do some writing. The nib is fine, the ink is noodlers. Navy. I've used a lot of Indian pens over the years, um, some of which are incredibly cheap. I'm not even going to say inexpensive. They just, they are so cheap to purchase. You're talking two, three dollars. Many of them have very hard nibs, very rigid. One thing I really like about this pen is that although it, it has that, that rigidity to the nib, it's smooth. 
because some Indian nibs I've used, especially the very cheap ones, are very, very scratchy. This isn't really scratchy. It's, it's actually a, a pretty nice, uh, smooth writing experience. Is it the smoothest nib I've ever used? No. Is it scratchy? No. And as you can see, ink flow is pretty good too. Eyedropper, ebonite feed. That's really quite a nice combination. Let's look at the wetness. Not a gusher, but it's definitely on the wetter side of things. Line variation, well, as I said, it's this nib is a nail. So maybe you can squeeze out a little bit, very, very carefully, but not a whole lot. Reverse writing is possible, the nib will run dry, but you can take it from a fine to, I would say, an extra fine. So, not bad at all. I've shown you the parts of the pen, I've shown you how it writes. Now, let's discuss what I like about it and what I not like about it. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Guider Ebonite Raja Medium Pen? There's a couple of things I really like. First of all, something I hadn't really emphasized, but these pens are handmade. So, in that regard, it's that's very nice. And if you then consider that it's seven dollars for a handmade pen. I think that's really quite impressive. And there's a couple of things that I think are really likeable about this. First of all, very pleasant size. Comfortable, nice, nice section, comfortable to hold, with larger hands too. Just a pleasant pen. I like that. Ebonite feed, always nice. Ebonite just has a really nice ink flow, so that's really pleasant. Um, the nib is fine. And that's what you get on it, uh, but now that you have Schmidt nibs, maybe there are a couple more options. These original nibs were quite fine, also quite rigid. Some people really love that. Large ink capacity, uh, that's, uh, I mean, it's a fairly large barrel to, to be eyedropped, so all of that is nice. And I like the Ebonite. Ebonite is nice, you can knuckle it, as they say. Smell, yeah, it does have a, a very specific um, uh, smell, so that's, that's actually quite nice. I, uh, I, I, I like it. It's a nice material, it's very warm to the touch. I like that. Things I don't like about it so much, well, to be honest, not a whole lot. It's a simple pen, but at this price, it's kind of hard to, to really critique it for flaws. If I really had to point something out, then what I would say is that a slightly bigger nib may look nice on it. This with a number six nib, I think it could have that, and that would be a nice touch. But beyond that, handmade pen, these prices, the way it writes, the way it fills, and it's nicely made. There are no sharp edges. I mean, the craftsmanship is, is very good, so I really think it's a nice piece. So the bottom line is, if you can find one, you're in the market for a, a nice-looking pen with a big ink capacity, you don't want to spend too much, definitely consider it, because in my mind, it's worth it. So, I hope that was useful. That's all there's to it, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.